and welcome. This is the Pompaws Palette Palace. Okay, so most of the time when I'm going to be doing videos on YouTube, it'll be me out and about on the bike. There will be some occasions though that we need to do some in-studio work and the studio is the Palette Palace. Uh, it's split up into sections and I'm not going to be showing you the rest of it yet because it's all untidy. So this is the bar section and then over there we've got the computer section and then we've got the bikes. Uh, I've got two bikes currently. I've got a VN800 bobber that I'm working on that I've done quite a bit of customising to and then I've got my trusty old steed Pearl because uh, she's pearlescent white. Uh, and I've had for almost five years now a 2012 uh, Suzuki V Strom DL650. Um, 35,000 miles I've got on her now. Um, and she just doesn't miss a beat. Um, I know I'll be doing a video um, soon of um, five years of ownership and my opinions. But obviously, I think it's a grand bike. And I thought what I'd do is just to introduce the Palette Palace. Now I've had a YouTube channel for a couple of years and I've put bits of stuff on there and I've not really bothered with it much, but I have set a new year's resolution to myself to do more with the YouTube channel and try and build up the subscriptions and the likes. So you know what to do. Hit subscribe, hit like, help a fella out. And I thought I'd start off today, right, with dead simple. Uh, I did put one on the other day because I were out testing some stuff that I've been treating myself, new toys. I do like my toys. So I thought I'd share with you um, some of my findings that we've got. And the first thing I want to talk about today, and we'll hopefully do these in chapters as well, um, but it's all a learning curve. So the first thing um, is the new helmet that I got myself. Uh, so it was time to buy a new helmet. And I was using the Caberg Tourmax Adventure style with a peak. Um, but I decided, right, it's time for a new one. That was, you know, well over three year old. So I, I needed to look for a new helmet. I've got the Bobber and I've got a Scorpion uh, Combat for the, um, when I'm on, out on the Bobber. And I wanted one that potentially would do both because at the same time as buying a new helmet, I've also decided that I was buying a new Senna. So this is the Senna 50C. So it's got the camera and it's also got the mesh. Now the mesh is really easy to use because you literally just flip up this little lever here and then there's a button underneath. You press the button, boom, it connects to an open mesh and anybody else who's on mesh it instantly just connects them to uh, I did try this um, when we were out not so long ago riding around Northern Ireland and there was another who was on mesh built in and two others who were on mesh adapters and it works flawlessly so anybody thinking of getting an upgrade definitely recommend getting the mesh even a mesh adapter, it's just so much better than Bluetooth. It's unbelievable. Until you've tried it, you'd not notice. It's, it, it, it's, it's just superb. So I decided I'd plump for the 50C. Because I did used to have, on the old helmet, um, I had a GoPro, which I had on a chin mount. So I'd ride around with the GoPro mounted like that. And decided it's not what I wanted to do. So... I uh, thought about it and took a chance on the 50C with the camera built in. Now, like I say, I did do a, a, a brief, well, it's a 20 odd minute video, um, testing out both the 50C and the Insta, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, and there'll be a link to that video here, and it's on my channel. And that's a, a multicam edit of me riding around with footage from both the 50C and the Insta. Uh, the Insta is just a, out of this world piece of kit. So back to the helmet. So this is the Scorpion Exo Carbon Air 1400. 
or whatever it is. It's it, in them order of things. Uh, it's a 240 quid helmet, sports bike shop, not affiliated to them whatsoever, no affiliation to anybody because I've got about 12 people who watch my channel. So, yeah, 240 quid for a carbon lid. Comes in three shell sizes because I've got a big fat aid. Um, I've had to get the XL. XL's a perfect fit. Um, some of the features that you, you know, you, I mean, end of day there's other people who do better reviews out there and they'll go list all the features and give you the uh, the stats and what weight it is and and everything else i can tell you it's light right compared to my other helmet it, it, it's, it's massively light some of the key features of this one is the the lock here good thing and a bad thing so the good thing is yeah it snaps shut now, I've got a really bad habit, and I know it's a bad habit, of riding around with my visor open, right? Ride around with my visor open all the time. When I'm on the V-Strom, get away with it, because I've got a decent screen, and the air just bounces straight over the top. I don't really get bugs in my eyes or anything like that. So I've got a really bad habit of that. It's a bad habit, because if someone comes flying up, whacks you in the eye, you've only got two of them. One of mine's knackered anyway, so you've effectively I've only got one, and if that goes, that's it, and ghost. So I should really be riding around with my visor shut. And it locks shut, and it locks shut pretty well. Now, I've been out in the lashing down rain wearing this recently. Good points and bad points. Good point, nothing gets through. Keep that visor shut, you're fine. Bad point, and especially for me this, what I noticed was, if I come to stop and flip it up, number one bad point is... That is a bugger to do with your gloves. Now, especially if I use, I've got the RST heated gloves. And they're quite thick. Um, and getting your thumb under there to unclip it, it's not, it's not the easiest thing to do. So that's a bad point. Like I say, it does keep you perfectly dry around here. However, if you do open it and you're riding around like that just for a little while, the rain manages to get in on the inside of here. So that, that's a bit of a bad point for me um, because you've got rain on the inside then and you can't do anything about it until you stop, get a tissue out and you've got to wipe it. Um, it does have an internal visor, which flips down, done with a control here. Easy enough to operate when you're out and about. Um, a lot of people complain, and I had to use this the other day when I was out, because um, it was quite sunny, that there's a massive gap there between the visor, the sunscreen, and, uh, and people complain about this gap. I didn't find it that bad a problem, to be honest. That's just me. Um, and I tend not to use it. In the box, for 240 quid, you do get... another, not road legal, another shade. Uh, the dark smoke one doesn't come with another pin lock so if you did want to have that carrying it around with you and use it and switch about on warmer sunnier days um, you'd need another pin lock uh, the pin lock that does come with it is can't think if it's got the writing on I apologize like I say, somebody else will have their facts and figures. Uh, I think it's a 90 second one. Um, the pin locks have got a number after them. And the number after dictates how long you should be sat for, at the lights, for example, with it down before it starts fogging up. So this, it reckons about 90 seconds. I've not had any problems with fogging um, when I was wearing it. And I have been using the visor a lot more than I used to. So it's a good thing. Um, other bad points for me, 
so it does have down here right a, 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 a chin wind guide it doesn't do nothing um you've got obviously your ventilator there and you've got ventilation at the top as well the ventilation again you've got a big channel that runs all the way back through there so on hotter days and look at you know you've got an exhaust pipe there for it so you should get quite a bit of air movement through there and keep you nice and cool on the colder winter days now like i say i was out on the third of january um and although it got it were about eight degrees if the sun was out where the sun had disappeared it did drop quite quick and i definitely needed a neck scarf on so i needed to be wearing a neck scarf so i definitely needed a neck scarf on you need to be wearing a neck scarf and because the the wind just coming up underneath there is proper cooling around your delicate little face like me so we fitted the um 50c to this it again really good points really bad points so we'll move on to the 50c the 50c some really good points the audio that it captures and you'll see if you watch the video the audio that it captures is superb absolutely superb cuts out any background noise and it's literally like you were doing studio sound for me anyway as a layman right it's awesome and it captures it straight onto the footage and that's great too no more you know messing about syncing up which i'm gonna have to do with this video because i'm currently using uh, a sony camera and i've got as you can see a lever here that keeps dropping off because i've lost the clip um going to a zoom h1 which will record the audio and then i can sync them up after you don't have to do that with the old 50c um it just records it straight onto the footage and it's awesome and also i used that main audio footage then when i did the multicam and again if you watch it you'll see where it flicks between the two cameras and i just used that one audio track all the way through and it works brilliant um when it comes to fitting the boom mic um didn't have much joy with the boom mic so i went for the smaller mic and in fact i forgot to mention something on the helmet as well it's called the Ur because I don't know if you can see inside there. Let's try and get that out of the way. If we can see, there we go. So we can see that red blob there and the little silver thing next to it. And what that does is that pumps up the cheek pads. So the cheek pads pump up and squeeze your face. Because I've got a fat face, I don't need to do it. I guess when the helmet's been worn in a bit and the cheek pads are a bit more worn, you can just give it a pump up and it'll fit you nice and snug. You press a little silver button, releases it again. Um, also, it's got the quick release emergency ones. So if you were in the event of an accident, they just come along, they could just whip these out um, and it's an easy way of getting your helmet off without ripping and breaking your neck. So, so sorry, back to the 50C. So, it doesn't fit really well on this helmet it fits well enough um, but it is a bit loose and i can't i don't want to tighten it up anymore so what i'm thinking of doing is i've got an old inner tube and i'll possibly line it with a bit of rubber just to help it give it that much more of a grip um, it will record in 4k up to 60 fps but it doesn't do the EIS, which is electronic image st stabilization. You can only get that in 1080p. So I am recording in 1080 um, on the other video. I do want to have a try at 4K. Again, we'll move on to the Insta in a minute. So the 1080 is good, uh, you know, and it's great. But if you wanted to capture that 4K, and again, if I want to stick with using a GoPro, and sticking that on 4k um, and mixing those images you know that's gonna be a bit of a bugbear i've also um if you stop and you're out and about i've got the z fold which again 
record full K, 4K. So I'm a bit mm, white nose image stabilization. It could do image stabilization at 30, surely. But anyway, that, that that's one of them. Um, the other massive bugbear I have with this center unit is you do get with it um, a little sort of USB wireless adapter. And the idea being you sort of use that as your charger, but also you can connect that unit to your Wi-Fi and it will automatically go away, grab any firmware updates, um, pull them back down. Just couldn't get it to work. I do IT for a living, right? I, I couldn't, it just wouldn't work. So then I tried to use the Windows uh, software. Again, it was just an absolute pain and I just didn't have the patience. So I tried it on the Mac and it went through in a breeze, right? So they've got a problem with the digital signature on the Windows software. So if you're having problems with the firmware and you know anybody who's got a Mac, just get them to do it on the Mac for you. It just... So if you are having problems with updating your firmware on the center, and I seem to remember I had the same problem with the 10 that I had, and I've still got the 20 S Evo. Um, it's never been an easy thing with, with them, um, but put it on a Mac and it goes straight through instantly. So if you have any issues and you, you've got problems updating your firmware, and the bad thing is with the firmware, you always get new features. So it's, it's good to stay up to date, um, but if you're having any problems and you know somebody with a Mac, just get them to do it for you. It's dead easy, take two minutes. Uh, that's that's my tip for today. Um, so yeah, so the firmware wasn't great. The other thing that isn't great on it is one of the, the, the features that I bought it for, and bear in mind, these units are uh, 450-ish, I think, top of my head. Um, so they're not cheap, but it's got voice control. Now, if I use the... <laughs> I can't say it because my phone's going to kick in, right? But I've got Google. Um, some of you have um, non-Google, because why would you, but you do. Um, so it works for those, so iPhone, Android, um, and your voice commands, as long as your phone's unlocked. Here's another tip for your kiddies. You can, with Android, I'm not sure about iPhone, I don't use it. So you can, with Android, have it set that your phone doesn't lock if it's connected to a trusted device. So if you set your center as a trusted device, when that Bluetooth is connected to your phone, it doesn't lock, which means you can throw it in your tank bag and forget about it, right? You don't have to have it out on display. You're not fumbling with it. And if you do want to use the, hey, call such a body or play this or do whatever you can have your phone tucked away in your pocket or in your tank bag or in your top box or wherever it is and you don't have to worry about it because it's going to be unlocked and it'll do them things that you want it to so it works really good for that but it's also supposed to have its own and it's like hey center start camera let's do this i can't it just doesn't work now whether it don't like my northern accent i got it to work briefly um it's just i've tried all sorts and it, it just doesn't work it's just not up to scratch. Um, so that's a bit of a shame. I might persevere with it. But um, that's that one. So then we'll move on to the center. So the 360. Uh, sorry, the Insta360. So Insta360. Um this is a separate pole that you buy. So you, you pay 459 quid just for this unit. That's the actual, let's take it off and show you. So that's the actual camera itself. About the size of it, it's called chocolate bar size. Chocolate bars aren't that size anymore. Um, you know, nice, decent weight to it. Um, the features over the X3, and again, I'm not going to do a full review on one of these because there's people who've done, you know, go into it more. I'm talking about it from a biker's point of view, from an easy use and for us. Um, and it's got 
an upgrade on the X2 is, let's turn it on. So an upgrade on the X2 is this massive screen and it's touch screen and it works really well. And you can pull it down, you can do your settings and you can choose which views you want um, and everything else. So that, that's really, really good. So works really well. Waterproof, um, toughened glass. Got to be careful with your lenses. You've got lenses on either side because it's a 360 camera and it captures images from there and captures images from there, stitches them all together. Anything that's in between, so like this, which leads on to the stick. When you attach the stick, because that stick sits in that field of view, even when it's extended, like so, because it sits in that field of view, it's invisible. So it's an invisible selfie stick. All the thing you can see is when you're walking around, people can see you like that. And it looks like you're doing that, but you're not. So, you know, whether you can slide it into your pocket uh, and hold it that way. So if you're walking around and you, you know, you can sort of, if I move back enough, you can sort of have it in your pocket like that you can sort of get away with it now again i haven't had it for mega long so i've not been able to um do much with it I only had two outings it performed really well and i got some shots that i would have never have got just on the gopro the thing with the gopro or the center is it's a fixed field of view and if you've got it attached to your camera you know your helmet on the chin it's just capturing that field of view that we're looking at there you can put it on your bike facing you but again that's all it's capturing the beauty of these and this is a game changer is you can mount this all over the bike now i have got a mount for it um and i've put i've already got some rambo mounts on there it will fit there's a, a thing you can get to fit it onto normal gopro mounts as well so you can basically put this about anywhere on your bike um again watch the footage you'll see I only really had it mounted on my crash guards. Um, I had it pointing you know, down at one stage and then a bit further up. But you managed to get side on views of you riding your bike, capturing the scenery, but also you can spin it around, see anything. Um, you know, for a, a dash cam, if you wanted it just solely for use as a dash cam, there's a feature that will do a 15 minute recording in a loop. Uh, anything happens, obviously you'd save that bit. But the beauty of this is a dash cam, dash cam, chin cam, helmet cam, whatever you want, bike cam. Um, this is gonna capture footage. You don't have to choose at the time, you can go back. So if it was in the event of an accident, it could be you've witnessed somebody else's accident, right? And you had this on. And you witness an accident and the footage from this, you can literally go on and then choose that full 360 degree. So it might have been that that, that car was off there. Now, if you was just on a, a GoPro and just capturing this bit and that car's off to the side over there, in the Insta360 software, which you do on a smartphone and it's dead easy to use and anybody could use it, you could literally just spin it round and it'll view that angle. So you'd see that car coming at you or what they were doing beforehand or, or whatever. Or again, you know, you can see from the back, all depending on where it is. Now I have got and um, bought a three meter um, extending pole for it, uh, extending selfie stick. I got it out of the box, had a look at it. It's like a fishing rod. If you got it at three meters, it looks like it's a quite bendy. I don't know how well that's gonna perform. And again, would you be riding around with three meters stuck on? No, odd bits of places. I can think of one or two on the places where I go, you could strap it onto your bike maybe ride for a couple of minutes just to get that shot but trust me the shots it's going to be like a drone shot following you so you know you can get some decent footage with that so that's the insta 360 absolutely superb again it's pointless me going on about it you know um too much because as everybody's done you know loads of their own waffle um and, and done it so much better than me no doubt
So that was just a quick roundup. Oh, and I did have something else as well as a bonus. So this is a little tip and a trick. It's not a trick, it's just a tip. So, I have one of these, all right? It's a power bank. Lots of people got power banks. This is a 2,500 um, milliamp power bank. Uh, it's also wireless as well, so it'll do wireless charging. So if you want to put your phone on, let's just see if this works. So I've got 100% on there. If I sit my phone on, does it come up and tell me? Probably not because it's not picked it up. There we go. So it does wireless charging, okay? So that's great just for standard stuff. The beauty of one of these is I've got a tank bag. Um, I've got a Givy tank bag on the V-Strom and it's got a little hole in it, manufacturer's hole that comes out and I've also got a USB charge, uh, USB port on my handlebars, which means I can plug this in to the back whilst it's running it's constantly charging my power bank but then the beauty of that is the center does about 90 minutes of video and then the battery will go flat you got to charge it again you can charge and go with the center which is the beauty of it so i have another spur cable in my bag which is here long enough I plug this cable into the bag, into my power bank, have that plugged into my helmet. Plenty of movement, freedom, it's great. Yeah, if you get off the bag and you forget, it'll just pull out. But you can charge, record and ride all at the same time. It's constantly charging the power bank, but also, on this one, there's three. So at the same time, I could be charging the Insta, if that's run out of charge, or the GoPro, or my phone. All of those things can be, it's slapped in your tank, or at your top box, plug them all into that. You can charge on this one, three devices, all at the same time whilst keeping this charge too which also means if you stop for a brew this is fully charged right and if your devices still need charging you just unconnect this walk in and you can still be charging your devices whilst you're having a brew or a break or whatever it is you're doing so that's it from the pallet palace pompo for now uh we've talked about a few things and hope that it's been interesting do me a favor uh hit subscribe hit the like, leave a comment, tell me whether I waffled on too much, if you want more information, um, I'm happy to chat to any of you, so um, yeah, hopefully we can get more done on these, and I've, like I say, I've got a couple of ideas that I want to try and do, um, but help me out, let me know people are watching it, by giving me a, you know, a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then it's worthwhile doing, um, so that's it for now, and um, Keep watching the channel and uh, we'll see you all again.